Did you know the story of Jesus who loves you? Jesus who died for you? Jesus can save you. Did you know that he's the one son of the one God? Son of the living God? Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day, Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake, I want to live a life so I hear him say, well done my child, enter in. Well greetings everyone, welcome once again to the International Gospel Hour, our Bible study time, and we're grateful that you've joined us, I'm Jeff Archie. Today we're going to be talking about some real good things from the Word of God. We're going to spend time with our highlight segment. We're going to go over to the book of Galatians for our search of the Scriptures. We've got a lot ahead of us, so let's begin with our highlight segment as we talk about our good friends at kiopublications.org. That's our friends Joe and Aaron Wells and their four children, Colton, Michaela, Camden, and Bennett. We want to talk a little bit about family devotionals. And from time to time, we'd like to present this idea here from our broadcast of International Gospel Hour, encouraging you as a family to have nightly devotionals with your children on the Bible. Now, when we talk about that, sometimes people think, well, man, I wouldn't know where to begin. I wouldn't know what to do. So we're hoping that sharing with you these videos coming up will allow you to, to, to see how it's done. As a matter of fact, if you have your children nearby, go ahead and take a moment, call them in and check out what's coming up. When we talk about family devotionals, and, and, and sometimes it's called Bible time, to where in the evenings you turn off the television, you put the phones aside, and you spend time with a few moments with the Word of God. Now, in the broadcast here, you'll hear Joe mention night and evening, and, and these were done in 2020 when folks were home a little more often due to that sad pandemic at that time. And so Joe created these to help families of another option of how they can study together. So we're going to go very quickly because Joe has a very special guest this week, his youngest child, Bennett, and they're going to talk about connecting wires and an awesome lesson about marriage. So if you will, here is our friends from Kyle Publications, Bennett Wells, and Joe. Hi, and welcome to our family devotionals from Object Lessons. Tonight, Bennett and I would like to demonstrate an object lesson for you that we have uh, from our series of family devotionals from Object Lessons. And so uh, we're going to begin tonight, all right? So Bennett, as uh, you look at the table, of course, you've already seen these, right? And so the idea is you were like, well, I know what's supposed to happen with those, right? So we've got three colors here, right? And what colors do we have? Black. Green and white. Black, green, and white, all right, or brown. Brown. But you, if you saw black, then whatever, as long as you know it's a dark one, a white one, and a green one, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Now, you know how these wires work. They're connected like that normally, right? Mm -hmm. All I did was ahead of time, I stripped the insulation off the end, okay? Because I want us to try something tonight, and I knew we would be short on time, right? All right, so here's what we're going to do. These two wires, we're going to do something pretty neat that uh, electricians, people who work with electricity like Baba, right, that they do all the time. And one of those things that they do is at times they've got to take two separate wires and they've got to make them stay together tight enough that they won't come apart easily, right? And when they connect them together, guess what happens when they connect two wires together? If, if electricity is coming in from one side and they aren't connected, does this one get any electricity? No. No. So what happens when they connect these two copper pieces together? What happens to the electricity? Both of them get electricity and I think there's a shock. Well, it'll produce electricity. And if you touched it, there would be a shock, wouldn't there? Absolutely there would. All right. So... Here's what we're going to do, though. We've got to find a way that in order for these to 
both get the energy and the electricity that it's supposed to get, we've got to find a way to connect them together. So what are you thinking are some ways we could connect them together? A cord or something. A cord. Well, what about this? Let's do this. Let's, you pick up one. What set do you want? The green or the white or the uh, brown one? All right, pick both those up. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take them like this, and I want you to touch them together. And then I want you to twist them one time over on each other. Like, like this. this. Like this? Yeah, just twist them together. And I did. Twist them together. See how I did that? Mm -hmm. Can you do that? There you go. Very good. All right, now here's what I want you to do. Now, we've connected them, right? But watch this. I want you to see how easy it is to pull that apart. Ready? One, two, three. That wasn't very hard at all, was it? No. No, it wasn't. Because if it's not connected well, then it comes apart, right? What's another way that we could connect them, you think? What about tape? You think tape would work? That was I was going to say. You were going to say tape? Tape will work, too. But tape even is not as strong as it could be, right? Mm -hmm. So what we have are what are called connectors, okay? Wire connectors. And these are things. I'm going to give you that big one. It'll be easier for you, I think. These are pieces that electricians use to connect wires together so that they'll stay together longer and more securely, right? Now, here's what I want us to do to show you how that works. Pick up your wires, put two ends together like that. You see that? Just like that. You got them? I think so. All right. Now what I want you to do is I want you to push the ends together so the tips are like that right there. Can you do that? Very good. Now squeeze them together like that. All right, now take your connector and there's a little hole in there. You see that little hole? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want you to put both of those in that little hole and then I want you to twist it like you're trying to screw it on. See what I'm doing here? Mm-hmm. Okay, keep twisting. Is it getting tight? Uh, here, let me check yours. I think mine's in. It looks like it's in. All right. Now, now I want you to see how secure that is. Try to pull them apart, but don't try to obviously break it, but try to pull it apart. You see how strong that is? Mm -hmm. That's much stronger than the way we were trying to put it together before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that means this, that when you have a good connector, then the wires stay together, right? And what's going to happen is these wires will be useful uh, to get electricity, right? Both of them, and they're going to allow the electricity to flow through them, right? So what I want to talk to you about, though, is this right here. It's that connector. How important do you think that connector is to making these work right? Really important. Oh, it's very important, right? As a matter of fact, if we don't have that connector, then... The reality is that these are never going to be what they could be, right? So the connector is so important. Now, I want to talk to you about something else, okay? And it's kind of a big boy subject, but one that I know that you are you can handle because we want to talk to you and we have early in life. But it's a concept of the wire equals people, okay? So let's say one wire is a man and another wire is a woman, okay? And let's say they want to get married. Okay, do you think it matters what kind of wire it's connected to? Yes, it does, because different wires can accomplish different things, right? So it matters that they're connected with the right wire. But it's also important to have the connector, right? Because once the connector is put on, then that is a strong bond, right? A strong bond. Now, Here's what I want you to understand in this right here. If one wire equals a man and the other wire equals a woman, guess what the connector equals? God. The connector is God. And the wires coming together is like marriage, 
right? And so what I want you to understand, number one, is this. It really matters what kind of wire you're connected to, what kind of person, right? And for you, it would be a lady, obviously. But let's think about that. What, what kind of person do you think you should be uh, connected to? A Christian. A Christian. Absolutely a Christian. You want somebody who's going to help you get to heaven first and foremost, right? All right. And, of course, you're going to help her get to heaven. That's the other side of that, too, right? What else? Uh, nice. Nice. So you want her to be nice, and you're going to be nice. What about loving? You think loving would be there? Mm -hmm. I think so, too. What about uh, somebody that you enjoy being around? Would that be important? Yeah, sure. that's important. What else is important? What about, I know you, you like to eat. Mm -hmm. What about somebody else who likes to eat and likes to cook? Do you think that would be a good thing? That you could cook with and share some fun things with. And you like to laugh, so you want to be able to laugh with them, right? So the wire that you're connected to is super important because that's where the electricity, the energy, the, the flow is going to happen in your life, right? But if it's going to happen the way that God would have it to happen, then he has got to be the connector that joins you. Because we saw how easy it was to tear these apart, right? That was super easy to tear them apart when they weren't connected by the connector, right? So here's what I want us to look at. Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6, okay? The Bible says this, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and, and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Right? Now, there's a couple things in there. But the one thing that we're going to talk about tonight is just simply this, that in marriage, when God joins you, it is a strong bond, and he doesn't intend for that bond to be broken right? Because he's the connector in all of that, right? So it really does matter who we marry. And that's something that obviously your mom and I, we are concerned about for all you kiddos, but we want to make sure that those who may be listening tonight and watching this evening, that they understand that when it comes to relationships um, that your children will have in the future, let me encourage you, don't wait until they're teenagers to start talking to them about the serious aspect of the bond of their marriage in the future. That if they don't understand the importance of God being the connector and of the bond, then that will influence the way that they uh, seek after a spouse. So I encourage you, start early. Talk about the qualities of the person that uh, they need in a spouse, but also the quality of person that they need to be for a future spouse. All right? Sound good? You did a good job. Had you ever done that before? No, sir. That was awesome. You did a good job. All right, we're going to end with a word of prayer. Bennett's going to lead us in a prayer, and then we're going to say goodnight. So go ahead, Bennett. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've given us. Thanks for this time. Please help the poor and the sick. Please help the sick get better. Please help everyone have a good time during the self-quarantine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Did you know almost half of the global population has a smartphone? At the touch of a finger, you can access the International Gospel Hour by downloading our app absolutely free. You'll have access to our website, social media, podcast option, our YouTube channel, and other resources, all by the touch of your finger in the palm of your hand. Please download our app on your smartphone device today. It's absolutely free from International Gospel Hour. Well, we appreciate Daniel sharing that information, and also we appreciate Bennett and his dad, Joe. Got to have a little fun there. We appreciate their good teaching about connecting and, and marriage and all. And folks, that's just a good example of how to carry forth a family devotional. Let me add something here before we go to our Search the Scripture segment. We'd like to send this to you absolutely free, and we can do it one of two ways. We can mail it to you, but if you have email, 
just send us an email at internationalgospelhour.com, go to the website, hit the contact tab, or just write us at info, I-N-F-O, at internationalgospelhour.com, and in the subject blank, just put Family Bible Time Track or Bible Track, Bible Time Track. There we go. And I will send this to you. This is based upon a lesson and some material by a good brother and friend, Wesley Skelton, that he and his wife, Denise, used to have an awesome web uh, website, not a website, podcast, I'll get in a moment, uh, used to have a very good one called Arrows at Our Hand. It is still available through the lightnetwork.tv. But we put, with their permission, some of the thoughts that Wesley has brought forth, how to do Bible time with your family, in this track simply called, You Can Do Bible Time. We'll send this to you absolutely free. So. One more time, info, I-N-F-O, at internationalgospelhour.com and just put in the subject blank or in the email, Bible Time Track. We'll turn right around and send it to you in a PDF. You can call us at 855-444-6988. Leave us the same information. Or if you would prefer for us to mail this to you, we can as well. We will gladly help you and your family spend time each day. Now, imagine with me, that you view our broadcast, and I'm so thankful that you do. But what if you took time each night, not a very long period of time, depending on the age of your children and all, and spend time talking about the Bible and God's Word? Within 30 days, you think you'd see a big difference and a good difference? The track is yours. Let us know. Now, let's search the Scriptures. Today we want to spend time searching the scriptures. We're going to Galatians chapter 1. In an earlier broadcast, we began there. Let's search verses 1 through 3 of Galatians 1. Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia, grace to you in peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, friends, there's a lot of material right here. As this letter begins, you can see the expression of authority from the very outset. It's like we need to talk about some things, so let's lay the foundation. And when you look at verses 1 through 3, you see that expression of authority. Now, folks, this would be a program in and of itself. But you see, first of all, the appointment of an apostle, the apostle Paul. One born out of due time, as he mentioned. One to whom Jesus appeared on the road to Damascus when he was Saul the persecutor and told him that he would use him. He would be a chosen vessel of his. And it's through God and Christ, that authority, that Paul was appointed an apostle. So right there, I see Paul has the authority that's God-given. I can trust him. I know what he's doing. And then the supplement of the resurrection of the Savior to remind us of that great power of bringing him from the dead. There were those soldiers that took and crucified Jesus, murdered, took his life, There's Joseph of Arimathea that took him down, placed him in a tomb. But it took God Almighty to move that stone, stun those guards, and raise his son from the dead. That's authority. How about the saving of brethren? We become brethren in Christ as he saves us. That we are able to respond to His will, His way, His authority, and save our souls from sin due to the appointment of that apostle who is teaching of the resurrected Christ. And do you note there in verse 3, the grace that is granted. The grace that we are taught and instructed, Titus 2, 11 and 12. That grace that comes from God, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And the peace that is given. When you think about grace that comes from God, that's all-powerful, almighty. Nobody else's grace can touch that. 
The peace that is given, peace that passes all understanding, Philippians 4. Folks, you put all that together. Look at this authority. It's all through God in Christ. Not only the appointment of Paul, so what he is saying here, inspired of God, inspired of the Spirit, 2 Peter 1, 20, a holy man of God speaking as he's moved by the Spirit. So the appointment of the apostle is there, the resurrection of the Savior, the saving of brethren, the grace that is granted, the peace that is given, all through God in Christ. So let's highlight this a little bit. Let's begin with a summary. God gave all authority to the Christ. We note that from John 12, 48 through 50. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Folks, look at Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. And he put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So from God the Father through the Son, he gave him the authority. And as Jesus was leaving this earth, what did he say to his apostles? The authority they would receive through the Holy Spirit in John 16, 13. How be it, or however, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority. But whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. And then we note here in our reading how Christ granted the same authority to Paul as an apostle. His appointment was through Christ, and Paul makes that a clear distinction in 1 Corinthians. Colossians, as he opened up other letters that he had penned, his appointment was through Christ. And throughout this writing, Paul is defending his apostleship, as we will see a little later in our study. But he begins this letter identifying himself as an apostle, as he does in other letters. When we see that Christ arose from the dead expressing God's authority, let us embrace the words of Romans 4, 24 and 25. Who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. So dear friends, from this study in the book of Galatians, there is no greater way to establish truth or such power of God's word than to affirm from the very outset that such authority is of God. I mean, after all, Paul acknowledged Christ of the Lord Lord meaning owner and ruler, Jesus, Savior, Christ, anointed one. His acknowledging of the Lord Jesus Christ, the owner, the ruler, the Savior, the anointed one, that establishes the authority that Christ has from the Father. And when we open up His Word, we are strengthened and see what can come forth and the power of that authority, how it is expressed. And dear friends, we can take that. It's a guarantee. It's guaranteed not to splinter, split, bust, nor rust, nor break. And that's how powerful the authority of God's Word is. We're going to study a little more on this, our next broadcast, as we keep searching. But I'll be back in a moment with our Handling the Word of Truth segment. Our website is internationalgospelhour.com. That's internationalgospelhour.com. Please check it out and listen to our other broadcasts, learn more of our history, download our app, request our free newsletter and free Bible study. Also, check out our free resources available from our fellow laborers in the gospel. Yes, friends, all for you through our website at internationalgospelhour.com. And now, friends, our Handling the Word of Truth segment, we want to begin with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, a great text that exhorts us on how to handle the things God brings our way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Now, friends, can we ask a question from this text right here? Are standards of right and wrong to be decided and created by man, by humans? Is that the standard that we have of right and wrong to be decided by individuals? 
Back to our thoughts from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Notice, trust in the Lord. We're not going to trust in man. Folks, we cannot trust ourselves to do the right thing sometimes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Let's place our trust in the Lord. Notice, acknowledge Him. He shall direct your paths. When I trust in the Lord and acknowledge Him, I'm going to acknowledge all that He teaches. It's going to come into my heart. He will direct my paths. After all, it was Jeremiah that said, O oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Jeremiah 10, 23. Dear friends, man's heart must find a greater standard. Our hearts must choose correctly and not allow our hearts and ourselves to be the only choice. Now, I know you're thinking, no, wait a minute, I have to make decisions. That's true. But if we allow our heart with no guidance of God, no trust in God, no acknowledging of God, and we say this is the only choice, it's the wrong choice. It's not in our way to direct our own steps. But when we handle the Word of God, God says, I'll direct you, and I'll lead you, and I will help you. So friends, we want to put away the standard of, well, whatever man says, whatever man thinks, that is the standard. There's a better standard, and it's the word of truth that we should handle correctly. I'll be back in a moment. We'll wrap up our broadcast. But first, let us help you with your study of the Word of God through our free Bible Correspondence course. The International Gospel Hour offers a free Bible study course by mail. Study at home and at your pace. Please call toll-free at 1-855-IGH-6988 and leave your name, address, and just say, Home Study. You may also go to our website at internationalgospelhour.com, click on the Contact tab, and again, leave your name, address, and type, Home Study. We'll send it right away. Well, friends, from our friends, Joe and Bennett Wells, we began seeing the importance connecting man and woman in marriage. And you know, friends, he will connect with you and I through his word, which is the true standard. We want to be connected to God. Shall we do so? It's worthy, and it's the best way. Thank you for joining me today on the International Gospel Hour. And until next time, friends. Keep watching. Jesus can save you. Did you know that he's the one son of the one God, son of the living God? Jesus can save you. Jesus all day, Jesus every day. Jesus when I go to bed, Jesus when I wake. I want to live a life so I hear him say, Well done, my child. Entering.